Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. I hope wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world, you are having a very good end to the week. I'm back. I'm in the UK. As you can see, the cables are back. So sorry about that, but they're there. Unfortunately, the last couple of days when you've had the treat of my hotel room in Porto to look at and you've had a nicely prepared TV, all wall mounted and perfectly professional. Now you've got to come back to look into those wires that I know so many of you hate, but unfortunately I can do nothing about because if I did, I'd probably end up ripping the TV off the wall. Uh, so they'll stay in like that. But anyway, enough about that. Mikel Arteta has just been speaking at his press conference ahead of tomorrow's game against Newcastle. Right back to it for Arsenal. Having returned from that Champions League defeat in Porto, not much time to sit there sort of licking their wounds or feeling too sorry for themselves because they've got to get right back on it with a huge, huge game. They're all huge games now. 13 to go in the Premier League. Arsenal right slap bang in the middle of a title race against Liverpool, against Manchester City. They need to win pretty much every game. So every game is crucial. And Saturday night is going to be a big one at the Emirates. Mikel's been speaking about that. He's given the latest team news on Thomas Partey, on Gabriel Jesus, on Alexander Zinchenko, Tommy Asu, Urien Timber. Plenty to discuss. It's updates from Newcastle's end as well in terms of who could be playing for them on Saturday night. Uh, so let's get stuck straight into the meat and bones of it all, shall we? We'll start on the latest team news. This is what Mikel Arteta has been saying about the injured players who we haven't seen for a fair while yet. On Thomas Partey, who we know is back in training. He was back in training before the game um, in Porto. Arteta and Arsenal decided to leave him in England, didn't want to rush him back. This is what he said. He said, let's see, we have another session today. Obviously, he's been out for many, many months now, and we need to really nail the timing and when he has enough in the tank to compete. But I think he's very close. And then on Gabriel Jesus and Alexander Zinchenko, he said the same with Gabby. He has done a few things and Alex is not far too. So promising on Jesus and Zinchenko. Not so promising, unfortunately, on Tommy Asu, who has obviously come back from the Asia Cup where he was playing for Japan, but he picked up another calf injury. And uh, Mikel said Tommy Asu is still a little bit more, I think. So could well be very soon. Um, in terms of the return dates for Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko, Thomas Partey, you would think, has got a good chance of being available in terms of the squad for Saturday night. But Tommy Asu looking a little bit further away. And that is a shame, no doubt about it. I think Kivior's doing a really good job at the moment. He's playing really, really well. I thought he was excellent in the recent league games against Burnley and against West Ham. Struggled a bit more in midweek in the Champions League. I thought Porto certainly targeted him a little bit, as you would, because he's a centre-back playing at left-back. He has been playing very well. But Arsenal would, could really do with Tommy Asu being at least back available in terms of having another option. I don't necessarily think he has to move Kip, uh, Kivior straight out the side because I think that could be quite unfair on Kivior because he's been playing very well. But you would certainly like to have the option of uh, Tommy Asu. But hopefully Zinchenko at least will come back soon and uh, that option will be there. I did, I did find myself looking at that game against Porto, looking at how much possession Arsenal had and how much they were struggling at times to break open Porto, I was looking at it thinking, you know, this does feel like a really proper Zinchenko game where he could have made a big, big difference. So um, it will be good to have him back and certainly Gabriel Jesus. So it's good news that he's back doing a little a little bit. I think Mikel's right when he talks about Thomas Partey there. Now, we all want to see Thomas Partey back playing. Of course we do, because he's such a good player. He'd make this Arsenal team so much stronger in terms of the options, whether that be starting 11 or coming off the bench. Um, and for the run-in with the big, big games they've got coming up in the Champions League and then the big games in the Premier League as well, you know, if you've got Thomas Partey available, it just makes a massive, massive difference. I mean, he's barely contributed this season. He's barely featured at all. Um, and this is one of Arsenal's best, best players, the most important players. So to have him back for the run-in will be massive. And so you can understand that they're thinking, you know, he's been out for so long. We don't want to take any risks. We want to make sure he is absolutely ready before we throw him in there. That's why they erred on the side of caution in midweek in the Champions League. But yeah, you've got to think they're thinking Saturday night could be at least a time to get him on the bench and maybe get half a minute, half an hour into him in the second half. So that's the latest on party Zinchenko and Tommy Asu. Timberwise, another update from Mikel. He was asked again, you know, is, are we going to get to see Timber this season? He said, I really hope so. He's been really well. He's been with some players around now on the pitch. 
He's going to start doing some bits with us in the next week or so. And then we have to see how that evolves, how his confidence level, his fitness level, and hopefully the answer to the question is yes. So that's good news. He's been out doing some stuff with the players on the pitch where he says that he's going to start doing some pit bits with us in the next week or so. I mean, that is a big development when it comes to Timber. And then, but when he adds, we'll have to see how that involves, how his confidence level is, his fitness level. That's going to be a key part of his next sort of stage of his recovery and his rehab. Not so much his rehab, but his recovery, you know, confidence levels. When you come back from an injury like that, the first time you really get out and do a full contact session and you really put some pressure on that knee, something you haven't done in pretty much, you know, nine months. Mentally up there, I think it's very hard to sort of do that and not go into tackles with a little bit of fear. And that's a dangerous thing because if you don't go into tackles fully committed, you can get hurt. That is when you can get hurt if you're a little bit tentative. Um and so, so you have mentally, you have to be fully prepared to dive right in. Um, and so that's a big thing for players coming back from Crucial. I remember listening to um, to Hector Bellerin when he spoke about it and the sort of mental battles he had of going into those first training sessions, full contact training sessions and really putting yourselves about and then going into your first sort of couple of games in the league as well. And, you know, against elite level athletes who are fully fit, playing at the top of their game, and you're coming back after nine months out after such a serious injury, it can be a lot to deal with mentally. And that's what Timber's going to have to do now. He's had a lot to deal with already in the last nine months. He's so close to being back now. And it's great news that he's been out doing some stuff on the pitch already. And he's going to start doing even more bits with the full squad in the next week or so. But there's still a bit of way to go to Timber. And um, we all have to take it a little bit easy for him. But certainly good news on that front from Mikel Arteta. And hopefully we do get to see him a little bit more on the overall injury situation that Arsenal are facing at the moment. Mikel said, obviously, we have missed some big players and we still are, but you have to adapt to that. We want them back. We need them back as quickly as possible. And we know the impact that those players are going to have on us when we have the full squad ready. And he's right, it must be for a manager. You must be just be sitting there thinking, please come back. Because you're not just talking about any old players here. You're talking about Gabriel Jesus, Alexander Zinchenko, Thomas Partey, Yuri and Timber. Um, Takiro Tomiyasu, you know, five massive players. And you add those players into the mix at this crucial stage of the season when the games are coming thick and fast, when, you know, you really need your big players to stand up and try and get you over the line in big competitions. You throw those five players back into the squad and you suddenly look at how much stronger the squad looks, the bench looks, everything about the team looks. It's massive. And so, you know, you can understand Mikel must be banging on the door of the medical staff thinking, you know, when are we going to get these players back? When are they going to be ready? Because it will just make Arsenal in a com into a completely different beast over these, these final 13 league games and whatever, however many more games there remain in the Champions League. Um, and it just will make a big difference. To be fair to Arsenal, they've had so many injuries, so many big long-term injuries to key players this season. To be where they are right now, I think deserves a lot of credit because they've coped with it really, really well. The squad has coped with it really, really well. But we saw maybe in midweek again when Mikel didn't turn to that bench when the game seemed to be drifting. I know it's a little bit different. It wasn't a Premier League game. It wasn't a game where you desperately need three points. And nil-nil away from home in the Champions League is not a bad result. And you kind of want to do protect that result when it gets to the final 20 minutes and you're, and you're there. You don't have to win that game. A draw is a good result. And I can kind of understand you thinking, you know what, let's just keep it as it is. I don't really think these players are going to come on and change anything. But the fact that you do decide that, it immediately does raise questions, doesn't it, about do you trust these players or not? And we saw the response. You know, Theo Walcott was talking about it. Other people have been talking about it. Fans have certainly been talking about it. And Mikel was asked about that in his press conference today. And he did say, look, I've been using my substitutes a lot recently. And he has he used five against Burnley, he used five against West Ham, brought everyone on. Um, but he did accept that when you sort of make the decision not to do it, then you're going to get questioned about it, especially if the result doesn't go your way. But, um, so Arsenal have been doing well. I think they have been managing the situation well, the injury situation well. But as Mikel says, you know, it's going to be really big, big when you have this, these players back and you have a full squad available to you. Just turning the attention to Newcastle quickly before I move on and sort of debate what changes we might see at the weekend, because I think Mikel's going to have to make changes. I can't imagine he's going to go with the same 11 for the fourth successive game, especially when you factor in the trip that the team have just been on to Europe. Uh, but Eddie Howe has been speaking at his press conference today and there's some good news from Newcastle ahead of the game against Saturday. Joe Willock, Fabian Shah and um, Alexander Isaac, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the picture there, could well be back. Joe Willock's been out since November, I think. Isaac hasn't played since the defeat at Aston Villa. Um, and Shah injured his arm, I think, in the game against Bournemouth recently. But all three look like they are going to be back available for the weekend. They have been training this week. Uh, talking specifically about Isaac and Willock, 
to Eddie Howe said today they have trained this week. It's been good to see them back on the grass. It's been a long time for Joey. He's a huge player for us. We are really pleased for him to be back amongst the group. He's a very popular member of the squad. Alex is an important player for us too. We have one more training session today. We won't take any risks, but we are pleased with their progress. Whether they go straight into the starting 11, you'd think probably not, certainly for someone like Willock, who's been out for so long. Isaac may be slightly different because Callum Wilson's injured, so they don't really have the forward line that they'd want right now. And if Isaac's fit, they might decide, you know, we'll give him 60 minutes uh, and see what he can do in that game. I I think he's a fantastic player, Alexander Isaac. I actually think Arsenal should sign him. (laughs) I think he's been brilliant. He's right at the top of my picks for strikers that I would go for in the summer. If uh, there was a slight possibility that he was available, I think he'd be perfect for this Arsenal team. But he's an excellent player for Newcastle and he'll be dangerous for Arsenal this weekend. So that's the latest update in terms of team news from Newcastle. Looking at who could come in for this game, obviously Arsenal are very limited at the moment. And if Gabriel Jesus and Thomas Partey and Zinchenko aren't available for this weekend, um, which we'll have to wait and see, but if they're not, then the squad's going to be what it was for the last couple of weeks. And so there aren't that many options to change things. I can't imagine, for example, Eddie Nketiah is going to suddenly come in and lead the line for Arsenal. I think, again, it'll be Trossard or Havertz who will be the central striker in this game. Um, You know, can you bring Jorginho in for this match? He came on for 20 minutes against Porto. Is it, is it a match you bring Jorginho in? Emil Smith-Rowe, we last saw him start against Nottingham Forest. He didn't play at all. He didn't get off the bench at all in midweek. Can you move, Can you bring um, Smith-Rowe to, in to sort of liven things up a little bit and freshen things up? Because as I said, four games in a row with the same 11, I think it's a big ask. You know, Newcastle have had all week to prepare for this match. Arsenal haven't. They've had to go to Portugal, play a really demanded Champions League game. They've had to travel on top of that. You know, Newcastle just have to be fresher on Saturday night. It's just a given almost. You think they're going to, that is going to have to be the case. And so Arsenal are going to have to cope with that and we're going to have to factor that in. And you'd think that Mikel's going to have to freshen up the squad just to try and cope with a little bit. And Smith Rowe, I think, is definitely an option there. You can play him in midfield. Um, you could move Havertz to the central striker's role if you want. Move Trossard out, give Trossard a rest, bring Smith Rowe in to play in the left eight role. You could play Jorginho in there and rest someone, maybe move Declan Rice further a little bit forward. There are options there for Mikel Arteta, Reese Nelson. I mean, he started the game against Liverpool in the FA Cup game. Can you bring Reese Nelson in and play him? You do have to, at some point, trust these players. They are your players. You have rewarded Reese Nelson with a big contract in the summer. So if there's ever a time to play him, it's going to be now. Obviously, it's a really difficult game against a very good team who are going to cause Arsenal problems, who are difficult to play against. Um, And so you don't want to make too many sort of wholesale changes and go in too weak or consider yourself too weak. But I think you do have to make changes. When I look at what he could do, defensively, they're a bit stuck because of the injuries at the moment. Isimchenko's not back. We know Tommy Asu's not back. There's not really much that Mikel can do. I don't envisage him suddenly bringing Cedric Suarez in and playing him at right back. You know, Kivio's already having to play over in left back because of the injuries anyway. I can't see you're going to change much when it comes to that. But in midfield, there is definitely options available even with the injuries even if Thomas Partey isn't deemed fit enough to start you know you can play Jorginho like I said you can play um Emil Smith-Rowe Fabio Vieira is back of course although I can't imagine he would start this game given how long he's been out and the fact he didn't even come on against Newcastle I'd love to get your thoughts what do you think Mikel Arteta should do in terms of a starting 11 for this game I'll do another video tomorrow in the morning doing my predicted 11 all that sort of stuff ahead of the match if you want to be involved in that show you want your questions and comments discussed then please do reply, as always, down below with whatever with whatever, whatever you want to see Mikel Arteta do and what your predicted 11 will be. Personally, I feel like this is the game for Smith Rowe. I think you bring him in. I know you'll say, oh, you're a massive Smith Rowe fan, but I do think, you know, he's ready. He's fit. He needs to play. He played well against Nottingham Forest. Give him another chance this weekend. Freshen things up a little bit because I really think you have to do that now because of the demands the squad has been through in the last week or so. Um, Mikel was asked about the sort of reaction to that defeat in Porto. And it would have been bad. I mean, the dressing room would have been so, so low on Wednesday night. They know they didn't play well, but even having not played that well, I think, you know, you go in into that dressing room at nil-nil, you think we are heavy, heavy favourites to go through to the quarterfinals. That defeat with basically the last kick of the game and the, the way that goal came about as well. You know, understandably, Arsenal are going to be feel really crushed by that, I would imagine. So Mikel was asked about, you know, what has the reaction been like to that defeat? He says, what I see is a team that can't wait to play Porto at home now. And with that result, obviously, we've created a fantastic night of Champions League football in front of our people under the lights. 
when you need to beat them to go through. The task is very clear now. On using that defeat as motivation for what's coming against Newcastle, he said, what happened in another competition is there. What you can't deny is what is in your tummy after a defeat. And we have to use that in a really powerful way to be even better. He does love that quote, doesn't he? Use that or feel it in your tummy or use what's in your tummy. He always says it. He loves it. Um, and you would hope they are going to use that motivation. They've bounced back well. I remember when they lost against Lons in the Champions League in the group stages. They then came back and beat Man City immediately after in the Premier League. They used that defeat well and they bounced back and they responded well. They need to do that again. I thought it was interesting what he was talking about, how they can't wait to play Porto now. Uh, when he did talk about that, Matt, you know, the, the, the result as bad as it was and as frustrating as it was, it does create a potential you know, a fantastic night at the Emirates. You know, Arsenal, if they're going to go through, they have to win this game in front of the in front of the Emirates crowd, under the lights. I mean, it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. It's still a long way away and there's still some big games in the Premier League to play before that. But it is a really exciting prospect, you know, how special that night could be, how loud that night could be, the Emirates atmosphere that night. You know, it's all set up to be an absolute belter. Um, and Arsenal, if Arsenal get through, which, you know, fingers crossed, they're going to, and we all hope they do, then it could be a really, really special Emirates night. Uh, on bouncing back from the defeat against Porto in the Premier League this weekend, he said, that's it, Porto is gone. We discussed it. We know the things that we did well and the things we have to improve. We want to create an atmosphere in the stadium on Saturday from the beginning. I ask everybody to go there tomorrow night with full energy because the team is going to need it. We are in a really good moment in the Premier League. We want to continue to be there. And tomorrow's game is vital to achieve that on Newcastle. We said that they're a really good team. We're well coached with fantastic players. They have great spirit within the team and they are very difficult to beat. Of course, they're difficult to beat. Arsenal were beaten by Newcastle earlier on in the season. They drew this game at the Emirates in the league last season, nil-nil in that really sort of frustrating, niggly game. You know, I think there's going to be, it's going to be pretty spicy there tomorrow night. There's definitely a bit of a rivalry that's built up between these two teams over, you know, games over the course of the last couple of seasons. That nil-nil draw last season was very, very spicy. You know, Arsenal very frustrated with Newcastle's tactics, similar sort of tactics that we saw Porto um, put into place in midweek. I imagine Newcastle are going to come here and they're going to approach it in a very similar way. They're going to try and slow the game down. They're going to take their time over throw-ins, free kicks, goal kicks, just like they did last season. They're going to try and wind the clock down. They're going to try and wind Arsenal up. Bruno Gramares will be doing it. You know that's the way they play. They did it in the game. At St. James's Park. We all know what happened in that match with the VAR goal and how unjustly Arsenal felt after the game. They felt like they were robbed of what would have been a decent point for them. Um, and I just think that's all going to add to the needle. And I think the fans, there's going to be a bit of needle between the fans as well. So it's going to be very, very loud in there on Saturday night. Mikel's saying, look, we need an energy. We need everyone there with full energy because the team is going to need it. And they are, because they are going to be tired. There's no doubt about it. And Newcastle are going to be fresh. And so you, they do need the crowd. It needs to be a really cracking atmosphere at the Emirates just to try and really roar Arsenal one. That win against Liverpool recently in the league is just an incredible atmosphere and that played such a massive part in the game that the players produced and how well they performed. And We need that similar on Saturday night. I'm really looking forward to this game. I'm going to be there, of course. I'm actually in the press box this weekend, not in my seat, I'm in the press box covering it uh, for goal. So I'll be in there. If anyone sees me before and after the game, come and say hello. Actually, big shout out to everyone who came up and said hello, who I bumped into in Porto. Plenty of you uh, I saw over there. Um, even Portuguese Arsenal fans came up and uh, said hello, spotted me there. So good to see you uh, as well. So thank you to that. And I'll hopefully see a fair few of you at the Emirates on Saturday night. But I will be back tomorrow. I'll do another show. As I said, looking at the predicted 11, who could start that game? If you want to get involved in it, you know what to do. In the comments below, give me your opinion. Give me a question. Give me a predicted 11. And I'll hook them all, all up and try and get plenty of them in tomorrow's show. Until then, everyone, have a very good Friday. Speak to you very, very soon. Bye-bye. 